What is good, Grey Gang? We're here today. We're actually here at this pond. Our plan is to get a crappie. Now, we know crappie live here in the pond, so that's what we're going to try to catch. We're going to be using about two techniques. One, just some live bait. We have some minnows and really small blue go in there. Well, yeah, there you go. We only have four, so that should do plenty enough. Abram's actually going to be fishing with it. It's this one right here on the bobber. Then what I'm going to be using, I'm actually going to be using some artificial. Just some little, just some little crappie little thing. If you want me to be real honest, I really don't know what they are. I've also never used them, but we're going to today. I'm going to try to set y'all up the best I can, but we'll go ahead and get one out of here. Now, if you don't know, crappies eat like small fish and bluegill. And so Abram, he's actually going to be using real small fish and minnows. I'm going to be using something to imitate a small fish or minnow. I'm going to go pretty simple. Just put it on this extremely small head right here. So I'll just run it up through here, right down the middle, run it up on the hook. And there we go. That's what I'm going to be using. Now, since we are using live bait and live bait imitators, there's a really good chance that there's a lot of species that we could catch. We very well might come down here and catch a bass by accident. Especially with the live minnows, like... There's a pretty good chance anything will eat a live minnow. I mean, you got bass, catfish, crappie, tarpon, iguanodon. I mean, the list is just endless. But I tell you what, guys, Abram actually ran over that way chasing a butterfly. I'm going to go ahead and get my rod. I'm going to start fishing right over there by those brush piles. Did you catch it? Catch what? The butterfly. No. Got away, didn't he? Yeah. Okay, Abram. Well, there's your rod. There's the minners. The main thing we need to do is target these laydowns. I mean, there's a big old tree fell on the water right there. That should be a perfect place to, you know, well, get a crappie. Because they just hang around trees and stuff. A crappie's favorite cover is by far wood. You know how to put a minnow on? Not really? Not really, no. Okay. See, we'll go ahead and load you up a minnow. We're going to hook this guy right through the bottom lip and out the top. There we go. That way he'll just sit there and flip. And if nothing eats him, we can just turn him out at the end of the day. Now, the best idea is to go cast it over there probably towards a little bit towards the deeper end and now we just sit and wait if your bobber goes under you know what to do yank it rip some lips but don't jerk too hard because you actually can't rip their lips i'm going to try to come over here without getting snake bit which may be the hardest part of the day i should be all right though anti-venom get the anti-venom a little bit farther oh okay that's a frog okay okay we're good now i think i just throw this around and bounce it around like it's a little minnow hopefully get a little crappie oh done got a bite what was about that I don't know what he was, but. I think I'm gonna go back and get a live bait. Oh, my bobber's gone. See that? No. Something took my minner. I wasn't looking. I was poking a tree with a knife. And here we go, guys. Abram actually came in clutch and caught us a crappie right here with a live bluegill. Unfortunately, I didn't get to catch on camera. I tried to use my GoPro, but it just kept turning off with an SD card of error. I don't really know what was happening. But right now, I'm also getting eaten by a horsefly. But anyways, let's check in on the crappie. The last crappie we caught here, which is the one we put in the pool pond, was a black crappie. But I'm pretty sure this one is a white crappie. I'll let you guys be the judge, though. So Y'all know more about crappie than I do. I don't know. Is he a white crappie or a black crappie? I mean, I can kind of see both. He does have black spots, but either way, we're going to put him in here, let him swim around until we get home. Then we'll go ahead and start catching this guy and cooking him up. I mean, I guess we've already caught him, but still. Tell us about how you caught him. What was it like? Well, okay, so here's what happened. I got the pole and I casted it into the water and then I waited until the bobber went down and then I pulled it up and boom, it was a crappie. Or as they say in Michigan, a crappy. What's his name? Or do we not name fish we eat? We won't name him. Okay. <laughs> Maybe if he wasn't so crappy, we'd name him. <laughs> I caught him, okay? You, did you catch anything, huh? No. Did you catch any fish? No. All right, all right. Hey, where are you going with the fishing pole? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just going to take it up to the front seat with you? Yeah. <laughs> crappy master. I'm the crap master. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys now we're about to actually uh clean this guy for this guy we're gonna fillet him kind of like the catfish except we're not going to skin him first a lot of y'all really like the catfish catching cook and so that's really why we're coming out here and doing a crappie just like this but here's the crappie i think we've determined it's actually a black crappie first thing we're gonna cut right through here cut a little deep but not so deep that it cuts like the good stuff and then we're going to come around kind of grab the fish this is a small crappie also but uh we're gonna make us a good cut right down its back all the way back to its tail it's kind of hard to hold but uh we're gonna run my knife right back down the backbone just like on the catfish right back 
down to the tail. And then I'm gonna turn it over, do the same exact thing. Right here, bring my knife, go right down its spine. And now what I'm gonna do, is I'm actually gonna get my knife and run it right down here. We're gonna run my knife right down the ribs. Make sure not to try to get any of the ribs, obviously. I'm also not a crappie expert, so. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, snap. That's good eating, boys. <laughs> That's what we're walking away with. That right there. Okay, maybe we'll have better luck on this side. One good thing about fish is that if you mess up on one side, it's okay because, well, you, you always have the other side. Practice to try to redeem yourself with. It's also not a big crappie. Looks like we're eating crappie nuggets. <laughs> Looks like it. Sorry that I didn't exactly do a, an amazing job trying to fillet this crappie. And I mean, I've done a decent job at it too. You can look at him. There's not a ton of meat left on here. It's just, it really wasn't that big of a crappie. And usually whenever you're actually gonna eat crappie, you're gonna have like 30 of these. So that's really where the meat's gonna come from. As for one crappie, especially this small crappie, there's not a lot of meat there. And I mean, that's just kind of how it is. Also didn't do too great of filleting, but still. And now it's time for cooking with KG. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna make this pretty quick today. We got our thingy of flour. We're gonna throw the piece of fish in. Now we're just gonna shake it up. We're not trying to waste any time here, guys. Like, it is kind of, it is kind of 7.30, and we're not gonna lie to you, we also just came back from a KFC buffet. Luckily we did, because we got almost no fish at all. We only had one, and it was a small crappie, and then you put old KG trying to fillet the thing. You're not gonna get much meat. I mean, that's kind of a gift. Same setup as a catfish, just some oil in a pan, about medium heat. It's been getting hot for a little while there. As you can see, it's already starting to steam. Extremely hot. The good thing about fish is it doesn't take long to cook at all, like three minutes top. Especially for these pieces, it honestly may be a minute, but <laughs> it's so small. And the bad part is it's gonna shrink a lot too, so we're basically gonna go hungry if this was our only food source. We'll let that sizzle and grizzle there for a second. We'll flip it, and then it'll be about time to eat. Here's the final fish. Yeah, there's not a lot of it, I'm sorry. And I'll be honest, guys, I've ate a lot of crappie in my days, and, well, none of it's ever looked as pitiful as this. Go ahead and pick your first piece. Which one you eating? Abram's gonna eat that one. I'm gonna eat this one. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> okay. I don't say it's better than the catfish. You would? It's dry, but. I think it's small. If it was a solid size crappie, maybe a pound, which is average, I'd say that it actually tastes pretty good. I mean, we could have cooked them a little bit different. We could have, uh, we'd had more meat instead of more flour. And I think that was one of the big parts. Also, there wasn't much seasoning at all. Just a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. We kept it extremely simple. What do you think about it? You got the essential crappie taste out of yeah. it. Yeah, you caught him. So how's it feel? Feels pretty good, that's all I can say. Scary. My boy Peanut needs a refive. He's knocked, and the storm is getting closer. Here, dude, take a med kit. But well, since it is Saturday, I'm about to come at y'all with a verse of the week. And it is a good one, too. Coming out of somewhere in Isaiah, here it is. Coming out of Isaiah 64, 8. Yet yeah, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. So just imagine it like that verse said. These hands will just say they're God, not me. Uh-uh, no sir, I ain't God. The hands are. And then you have some clay, and that's us. Each little bit of clay is each individual person. And you know, God's just sitting there. He's making the pot, he's pinching it, he's pushing a little bit, shaping it how he wants it to be. And just imagine every time he pushes or pinches a little bit, that's an event or a situation in our life. It may be a good situation, or it may be one that we think is actually bad. But once you actually step back and look at it, what that actually is, you feel pain in that situation. But that's actually God pinching the pot. So just keep in mind God's sitting there making your pot and every time he pushes it That's something that happens in your life. But if God never pinched and pushed on your pot Then you'd never turn out to be the pot that he wants you to be so all the bad situations you're being put in That's just you becoming the person God wants you to be <laughs>
Do you talk to your mother with that mouth? Oh my gosh. The disrespect is through the roof. Thank you for watching Kendall Gray's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on bell notifications, hashtag Jesus, hashtag Gray Guy.